الغوس الغوس خلصنا من النار يا روس الغوس خلصنا من النار يا رب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الحمد لله yesterday we looked at يا من هو سريع الحساب today I want to look at two of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this section together because I think together they give us a, a sense of understanding about how we can live our lives in balance. So I'm going to discuss two aspects today. One is Ya man huwa shadidul iqab wa ya man indahu husn thawab So I'm going to look at both of these together and as I said these names you understood why I'm doing this together for that sense of balance. What is one word saying, Ya man huwa shadidul iqab? We looked at it when we were talking about Ya man huwa shadidul mihal. Shadidul iqab, shadid again comes from severity and iqab is a retaliation, a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A consequence that is not a good thing for those who have done wrong things in their lives. So shadidul iqab is of course, taking us that side, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in retribution, is severe in consequences. And then the other thing that I'm taking together so that we can have a sense of balance is, Ya man indahu husn thawab. The reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, husn, is also very beautiful. And that's why when we take both these words, words or both these understandings we get a sense of balance in our lives and I think this is this balance that we are also reminded in this beautiful month of Ramadan in our dua al-iftitah we read this every night in Dua al iftita The balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful when it comes to forgiving, when it comes to rewarding. But He's also very severe in accounting when it comes to acts of oppression, acts of dhulm and tyranny. And this is perhaps the state of the heart of the believer. A balance between khawf and raja. Fear of the consequences of our evil actions and hope of mercy and husn thawab of a beautiful rewarding by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the balance that we are trying to achieve in our lives. Even when Luqman where we have the Surah Luqman in, in the Quran and then in the uh, Tafsir, we have a lot of hadith related to what are the different kinds of advice that Luqman gave to his sons. And one of the pieces of advice is about this being in a state which is balanced between fear and hope, khawf and raja. In one of the hadith connected to the Surah Luqman, it is said that Luqman told his sons, have hope in the husn thawab in the mercy and the beauty of the acceptance and the rewarding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have hope in husn thawab Even if you have done all the crimes that every other individual has done in this world. So even if my sins and my crimes are equal to the crimes of people, of the crimes done by people all over the world. Even if that is how severe my crimes are, my, my acts of sin are, according to this advice that Luqman gives to his sons, 
be hopeful in the husn al-thawab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you don't have one good deed, let's be hopeful, he says. And then, you know, on the other side, he says, even if I have done the good deeds of equal to the good deeds of all the people in the universe, every good deed, you know, of all the salihin put together, all the good people good together, if I've done it, but if I have wronged one person in my life, then beware and be afraid of the consequence of that one wrong that I have done in my life. That is perhaps the balance of Ya man huwa shadeed ul iqab wa ya man indahu husn Maybe another way of understanding is, of this is the understanding that comes in Surah Al-Hajj. Surah Al-Hajj talks about some very difficult positions in our life, you know, stations in our life, which are filled with khawf. But when we think about this balance of khawf and raja, we will see that wherever there is khawf or fear in our life, there is also husn al-thawab. For example, in Surah Al-Hajj, we are told about death. Who is not afraid of death? Death scares everyone. Yet death is also the time where we call our we call our deceased marhum. No, oh, I keep saying, remember the marhumin whose names appear on the slides in your prayers. Marhumin, rahama, it comes from mercy, someone who has gone into the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So where death is scary, at the same time, death is a place of mercy. So Allah is taking us closer in the journey back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is this balance between fear and mercy. He says, keep sending good deeds there and that will become husn al-thawab for you. If mouth is khawf. We think about the questioning in the grave and of course it's a scary it's a scary thought. Today, if you have to go to a simple quiz or take a quiz or sit for an exam, scary, of course it's scary. Now, this is a questioning of our entire belief in the grave. Of course, it's going to be scary. But that at the same time, there is the husn al-thawab. We are told that in the grave, which is dark, Allah will send the light of our prayers the light of our fasting in this month of Ramadan Kareem. There will be the light of charity. There will be the light of Hajj. There will be the light of Ziyarat. There will be the light of Ahl Bayt for those who believe in the Wilaya. An extra light over there. So where the grave becomes scary because of the questioning, at the same time it becomes a place of Hasnas, Tawab as well. The Hashar, Qiyamah, we talked about Sariu al-Hisab, it becomes a very scary thought. But at the same time, there is the thought of Shifa'a. The Prophet is Shafi al-Mahshar. There will be intercession. The Prophets, the Imams, the Salihin, the Shuhada, they will all be able to intercede on behalf of us, inshaAllah. So every place where there is shadid al-iqab, the fear of shadid al-iqab, there is the hope of husn al-thawab. And, and today being the 15th and the day of you know, the husn and Imam Hassan alayhi salam, the, the, the birthday of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, the grandson, the first grandchild of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm reminded of how Imam Hassan alayhi salam would tell people what he heard from his father, who heard it from his grandfather, the Prophet. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has distributed only one out of the hundred parts of his beauty and one hundredth of his mercy in this world. So today if you see parents being merciful to children or employers being merciful to employees or any act of mercy we see in this world today, any act of beauty we see in this world today is only one hundredth 
of what Allah has created. And the 99 parts out of those 100 are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever anything scares us in this life, we are reminded of the husn of thawab as well. Even when the Prophet was worried when they used to call him Abtar, they say, you have no children. Allah gave him the beauty of this grandchild, Al-Hasan. And in the name of this grandchild today, we ask that Allah accept from us all that we are doing in this holy month of Ramadan. And even though we know that we are falling short and we are scared of that part of the Shadid al-Iqab, we have a lot of hope in the Husn al-Thawab. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanaka ya la ilaha illa an al ghaus al ghaus khalisna minan nar ya rab